Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Well, finally, Alex Baldwin has been indicted. Alex Baldwin is now facing two indictments relating to the shooting incident on the production of Rush, a movie he was working on quite some time ago. The indictments are listed as either or indictments. They will choose the one which best suits the circumstances. Had the incident happened in Canada, the charges would have likely been criminal negligence causing death and criminal negligence causing bodily harm, as well as a host of other firearms related charges. The charges he is facing are essentially manslaughter. In this video, I'll be referring to information which I have heard from what I believe to be reliable sources. I also believe that this information is common knowledge, but I would like to point out that these are all allegations. They have not been proven in court and Alex Baldwin is presumed innocent unless he is convicted in court. So let's recap what we've all heard about this case. Alex Baldwin was allegedly handed a fully functioning and properly functioning and loaded single action revolver. According to information I've heard, the police have released the fact that they have tested the firearm and it was functioning properly. The firearm that was used in this incident was similar to this. This is a Colt 1873 single action army. Now, before I get a lot of hate in the comments, I want to state that this firearm does not work. This firearm has been disabled for use in the Canadian Restricted Firearm Safety Course, so it cannot discharge any cartridges. I want to also state that it does have dummy cartridges inside the firearm because I will be demonstrating what he should have done once he received this firearm. I will be demonstrating how he should have unloaded it. These are the dummy cartridges or similar to the dummy cartridges I have in the firearm. There is no primer and there is no powder inside. So this cartridge cannot be discharged. I also want to state that there is nobody else in this room. So there is no possible way that I could inadvertently point a firearm at anyone. What he should have done when he received this firearm is he should have proved the firearm safe. And what I mean by that is he has to physically check to make sure the firearm is unloaded. You never take somebody else's word that a firearm is unloaded and you never assume that a firearm is unloaded. For this firearm, you have to cock the hammer back into the loading position. In this particular firearm, you'll hear two clicks when the hammer is pulled back because it is true to the original Colt design. There are some models of the 1873 that are produced by Pieta, which have an internal safety and you only have to pull the hammer back once. But because this is true to the Colt design, you do have to pull the hammer back two clicks. You then open the loading gate and look into the chamber that you can see. And then you can rotate the cylinder, which has six chambers in it, and ensure that there are no cartridges in any of the chambers. If there is a cartridge, you unload it by pushing on an extractor rod. There are some firearms of this nature which have more than six chambers. Some even have less. So you must know how many chambers your firearm has. If it's a 22, some 22s are designed to have up to 12 chambers in their cylinder because they're so small. So it is always a good practice to rotate the cylinder more than you need to to check all the chambers. So when he received this firearm, the first thing he needed to do was point it in the safest possible direction. 
Once it's pointed in the safest possible direction, he pulls the hammer back. Note that my finger is nowhere near the, the trigger or the trigger guard. Then you open the loading gate. Once the loading gate is open, you can see into one of the chambers. And because the hammer is in the half cock position, the cylinder will rotate. If there is no cartridge in the chamber, you'll rotate the cylinder to the next chamber. In this case, there is a dummy cartridge in this chamber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on this tab here. And I'm going to push it. And the extractor rod will push the cartridge out of the chamber. Then I'm going to rotate the chamber one more click. There's another cartridge in there. And I'm going to repeat the process of unloading that chamber. I rotate again, and there's another cartridge in there. I repeat the process. Then I rotate the cylinder again, no cartridge, no cartridge in the next one, no cartridge in the next one, and I will continue until I've confirmed that there is no cartridge in any of the six chambers. Now I know that this firearm is unloaded. Mr. Baldwin allegedly did not do this. If he had, he would have seen that the firearm was loaded and he would have unloaded it. I've heard some people argue that actors are somehow excused from knowing firearm safety because they don't practice it all the time. They might not be familiar with firearms. But I disagree. It is my opinion that anyone who has possession of a firearm for any reason has a duty to learn how to operate that firearm safely. I've also heard that it is alleged that Alex Baldwin attended a training session, but that he did not pay attention. He was on his phone. I am of the belief that all actors and anyone working on a film where they may come in contact with a firearm, I believe that they should attend a training course, not just a training session, but a full-on training course, similar to the Canadian firearm safety courses, which are two days in length, and that they should be required to prove that they have passed the course, not just attended. I believe this because I know that there are a lot of actors who don't know very much about firearms. You can tell by the way they hold a firearm when they're using one in a movie. And many actors are also anti-gun, so they have no desire to learn. The next thing that Alex is alleged to have done is he, he pointed a firearm at another person. This may have been inadvertently, but we know that it happened because two people were shot. One of the rules of firearm safety is you never point a firearm at anything that you're not intending to shoot and that you're not legally entitled to shoot. And that's expressed in many ways. Some people say, don't point a firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. In short, unless you are defending your life or the life of someone else, you never point a firearm at another human being. In the movie industry, they will sometimes use camera angles to simulate firearms being pointed at another person. And they'll do this especially when they're using blanks. Because blanks can be dangerous if discharged at a person. In fact, back in the 70s, there was a case, which was well known at the time, where a celebrity had thought that it was a good idea to play Russian roulette with a revolver that was loaded with a blank. And he ended up killing himself. I tell my students that whenever they're handling a firearm, that they must make that the most important thing to them in that moment. They must use that firearm with extreme caution. Because firearms themselves are not dangerous. They're an inanimate object. They cannot make a decision to harm someone or to discharge. 
It's the person who is the wild card, the person who can be dangerous. In the firearms community, we often use the term, the loose nut behind the butt plate or the loose nut behind the grip. That's a saying that we use to describe the fact that people are the wild card, that people are the ones that are dangerous, not the firearm. Now, I do want to clarify, I'm not saying that anyone in particular is a nut. It's just a saying that's common in, in the firearms community. According to reports I've heard, Mr. Baldwin claims that he was practicing fanning when the incident occurred. Fanning is when you pull the trigger and you use your support hand to cock and release the hammer. So that trigger is held back. And this is how it looks. You put your finger on the trigger, take your support hand, and you run it across the top of the hammer, cocking the hammer, and then as it slides off the hammer, the hammer is released. This is not a very accurate way of shooting this firearm. And in the Old West, it was probably never done. But you've probably seen it in TV westerns or movies because it's a Hollywood thing. It's very popular in Hollywood because it looks cool. It's just not very accurate. According to what I've heard, Mr. Baldwin is claiming that he did not have his finger on the trigger. But that's impossible if he was fanning the firearm and the firearm was functioning properly, which according to what I've heard, the police have determined. If he did not have his finger on the trigger and he was trying to fan the gun, the hammer would be cocked back and wouldn't fall. There are some firearms that are set up as fanning only guns, but they've been modified. They are not functioning properly. In those guns, the trigger has been disconnected. So if Mr. Baldwin is claiming that he did not have his finger on the trigger, I'm going to have to call BS on that. But that brings up another point. And the point is, firearms are ergonomically designed so that your finger naturally wants to go on the trigger. And often people don't realize where their finger is. I have to constantly remind my new students not to put their fingers on the trigger. I have to constantly point out when their finger goes to the trigger. You have to train yourself not to put your finger on the trigger. It appears to me that there have been, there's been quite a delay in charges being laid in this case. I was a police investigator for nearly 35 years. And in my opinion, charges in this case have taken a long time to be laid. But because of the high profile nature of this case and the high profile nature of the defendant, I'm sure that's because the police and the prosecutor wanted to make sure there were no mistakes. And we must keep in mind that the police and the prosecutor must believe there is reasonable probable grounds to believe an offense has been committed. So a thorough investigation is required. As I said before, Alex Baldwin has not been convicted. And unless he is, he is presumed innocent. So everything that you've heard here today or that you've heard from other sources are allegations. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. Just please keep it civil. And please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a happy, healthy, and prosperous day.